This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Andrea is going to share, and we need to listen to how we need to store up food, survival tactics, all kind of goodies. She's going to share some real common sense. I hope you have enough sense to listen and follow suit. Amen. God bless you, Andrea. First of all, most food stores, most grocery stores, only have enough food to meet the needs of their community for about three days, for uh, three days to a week. Mm-hmm. So that's not a lot of food when you really think about it. No. Once it's gone, it's gone. Right. So mainly, what I'm mainly going to talk about is a, is a food pantry, mm-hmm. like a pantry that you're not actually eating out of very often at very all. Very good. For being prepared. Yes. So a home pantry will save you money on gas because it will prevent you from going to the store very so often. It can also prevent impulse shopping because the way that food pantries, uh, a home pantry would work is that you keep your, the things that will expire first to the front and the things that last longer to the back so that you you eat off of it, but at the same time, you're still you still have five years worth of food to cycle through. So and, and it can't and it can't depending on how you know what you do, uh, how how much you prepare with it, it can keep you prepared long term or short short term. You'll have food security from fluctuating income, someone becoming ill, losing a job, or national disasters. You want to stock up on foods that you already eat. Because it'll actually be really stressful to already be in a bad situation and then have to eat food that you really don't like and or unsure how to prepare. Mm-hmm. So you want to stock one food that you know that you're going to at least be okay with eating. And maybe even, you know, it can help you not be so stressed if you eat a warm bowl of oatmeal versus something that you hate, like sardines or something. <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing people usually get and does last a very long time is canned food. Canned foods can last from one to six years after the expiration date if they're kept in a cool, dark place um, and the cans are in good condition. Now, one thing about canned foods is that they need to check for the canned condition first. If it, if it becomes dented or it leaks or is rusty, what it could be a sign of not what's happening on the outside of the can, but what's happening on the inside of the can. And something called botulism can happen. Can ha- you can get botulism from eating spoiled foods that are in a can because of the metal and the food spoiling, and it can be deadly. It's very bad. So you just want to look for signs of a badly dented can. Mm-hmm. It's corroded or rust or leaking, and you wouldn't want to eat that. You want to throw that out. And at the end of the day, your safety is more important. If you if it ain't right, throw it out. Um, foods past their prime time will develop mold, bac- bacteria, or yeast, and it will cause them to smell or change color. So the safe way to check is, you know, smell it, does it smell weird, I don't know about that, throw it out, does it have any mold or, you know, is it slimy, then you just want to toss that. Um, If you are able to, you know, if the power is still on or anything like that, you can freeze food. It extends the life of perishable perishable food indefinitely as long as it's kept correctly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fully sealed or fully wrapped in clothes. Um... The simplest way to extend the life of any food, especially food you're trying to store, to keep it away from light, heat, moisture, and oxygen. So make sure it's closed completely. It's not in heat, a, a hot room or in direct sunlight. The best places are actually to keep them in basements or in a dark pantry where the temperature will stay consistent throughout the year. So I'll just do a quick little list of foods. That would be good to get if they're still on the shelves at this point. Um, and I'll tell you how long the, the shelf life is for it. So soft soft grains, barley, quinoa, rye, grits, 
If sealed tight and correctly, they can last up to eight years. <gasps> Hard grain. Beautiful. Buckwheat, millet, red or white wheat can last up to ten years. And now, I'm going to stress this. They must be sealed correctly because if it's in, and a, a lot of times what you can do is take it out of its original packaging and put it in mason jars or jars that have those seal types. You can also get oxygen absorbers. They will make sure that it continuously sucks oxygen out of the container for a very long time to keep it dry. Because if, if it's not sealed correctly, you don't you will not get a very long life um, out of these foods. They'll last maybe two years mm -hmm. or shorter. Um, White rice, basmati rice, or jasmine rice can last 20 years if sealed correctly. Hard tack. Now, this is something that's not necessarily a food you'd store. This is something that you would make very quickly. Mm -hmm. If you have flour, you can make something called hard tack, and it is civil, civil war bread. And all you need is water, flour, and salt. You just get a little bit of flour, and you get some water, put a little pinch of salt in it, and mix it all up and knead it for a little bit and you just pound it into something like you can roll it out flat or just pound it into something flat and you stick it on something hot like a um like a pan or something like that and you can it's not the best tasting thing in the world but you've got bread right three easy ingredients and then now this is not usually, you have to go to a specialty store sometimes to find it, but unground flour can last 25 years. Dry pasta can last 30 years. But if you buy it a uh, store-bought, kind of the cheap, very processed uh, pasta, it'll only last maybe two or five years. Ramen noodles last a very long time. <laughs> Dried beans last about five years, but the longer you have the beans, the harder they get, which is, Takes, it takes a lot more water and a lot more time to soften them, and it will also take a longer time for your stomach to digest them. Wow. That's the only downside about dried beans. But canned beans will last six years. Okay. Dehydrated fruit, if you make it at home, it's best to make it at home, will last 30 years if sealed correctly. <sighs> dried meat, you can make beef, beef jerky yourself. That will last about two years. Powdered peanut butter will last 15 years, and that you can keep in its original container that will last for 15 years. Oh. Now, this is stuff that will last almost a lifetime, and it is worth its weight in gold during times like this. Um, honey, sugar, corn syrup, maple syrup, um, sauces, soy sauce, vinegars, cornstarch, salts, bouillon cubes, instant coffee, powdered milk, and teas. Now, with the tea, you want to watch for bugs, and they need to be sealed tight because you can get bugs in them. But the key with all of the things that I just said, they all need to be 100% pure. They can't be a little bit pure. They have to be 100% because the stuff that they add into it will dramatically decrease the shelf life of these products. And now, uh, just a quick tip with the food things, um, rotate your pantry every couple of months, and you can also, I mean, if you really want to get intense about it, look into mylar bags and oxygen absorbers to really just store everything as, you know, safely and securely as you possibly can, and you will get a long life out of all these foods. Oh, here's a few others that I forgot to mention. Instant potatoes, instant mac and cheese, instant pancake mix, and instant grits and oatmeal are amazing. They last for a very long time. It's quick food, and they, need, they don't need to even be cooked very long. Some of them don't even need to be cooked, and it's a quick filling meal, and they last for a long time. And then, let's see. So I'll just name a few home essentials and personal things because that's really, really easy to overlook, especially when we were like, okay, we got to get food, and then we totally forget everything else. So some home essentials would be, if you have children, <clears throat> diapers, toilet paper, moist towelettes, because if the water stops running, you can still kind of clean yourself with baby wipes. You need toothbrush, toothpaste, feminine care products, um, water pur purification tablets, 
a portable water filter, dish soap, any sort of medicines that you'll need, vitamins, candles, batteries, bleach, because that has so many different uses, laundry detergents, a manual can opener, because you'd be surprised how many people don't have those anymore, and they only have electric. Get a manual can opener and a charcoal grill with extra charcoal, disposable plates, cups, and utensils. Those can just be useful. Now, um, if anybody's on a super, super budget, I'm not saying this is the greatest stuff in the world, but this, you won't even spend 50 bucks on what I'm about to say. You can get a can opener. at the. This is a dollar store. If you were to go to a dollar store, you could get so many things here, and you probably wouldn't think about it. Can opener, knife, multi-tool, Gallon, gallon waters, gallon water buckets. You can get bleach, dry beans, rice, juice, paracord, lighters, aluminum foil, glow sticks for light in emergency situations. Right. Duct tape, solar lights, trash bags, salt, various snacks, bathroom items. Lots of them will end up having tuna packets. And tuna, it has a lot of protein in it and a lot of other vitamins, and that would just be, and they let, and a lot of times they'll be, you know, two year, uh, it'll say two years, but they should probably go about three or four. So tuna packets, lots of canned food, and like I said before, you can find tons of instant foods in dollar stores. And then the last thing I have is medicine. Um, this is just because the smallest little thing can turn into a huge thing when you can't go to when you can't get to a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just things to um, have on hand. Um, yeah, um, antibacterial hand cleansers, yes. irrigation syringe, and that's because if you have a wound, you want to flush. Flush it out first, just in case anything got trapped in it. Right. And you can get something like that very quickly. You just flush it out with clean water. Mm -hmm. Alcohol towelettes mm -hmm. is to clean around the wound. Antibacterial ointments, a butterfly closure, or um, I think it's called berry strips. Mm -hmm. That will close the wound and stop stop it from bleeding profusely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, clotting agents to mm -hmm. Uh, aid in the clotting of blood, which will slow down bleeding yes. much quicker. Anti-inflammatory meds. Mm -hmm. A thermometer. A tourniquet. A tourniquet mm -hmm. Fine point tweezers. Medical tape. And something called an Israeli bandage, which actually has a clotting medicine on the bandage. And it, it applies pressure, closes the wound, and holds it in place. It's actually pretty awesome. And they're not usually that expensive. And bandages, 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 and dog, dog, dogs. Because we, I've never really seen someone bleed profusely, but uh, you don't want to be in that situation where you right. can't stop bleeding. Right. Uh, in some situations. So there's that. And the last, <laughs> the last few things I have. Okay, this this one is. The, the ugly reality of if the power turns off and the water turns off, your toilet's not going to work. So, you want to learn how to make a $5 toilet? Get a bucket and get some kitty litter. Doggy bags or mini trash bags. Excellent. All you got to do, sit on the bucket, use a little bag, do your business, put kitty litter in it. That way, it's quick, fast, efficient, and you can get rid of it. Mm. And then I looked up for... Dental reasons, you know, cavities actually kill. People don't know that. Cavities kill. <laughs> you can get infections in them. So if you were to ever, you, you begin to experience a toothache or you didn't take care of that cavity that you should have and now it's just getting worse, cold oil is good for toothaches and it will numb, reduce pain, and fight infection for any sort of mouth problem. And Something also people don't look into is seeds. For after the calm, you want to be able to plant food because at the end of the day, your food that you store is going to run out. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, so you want to look up non-GMO plants. Radishes, mm -hmm. onion, kale, spinach. Quick things that will go really fast like sprouts or lettuce so that you just get some sort of nutrients. You can even you can eat off of it almost every single day, just a little bit. 
um, corn, peppers, broccoli, beans, things like that, um, potatoes. Look into non-GMO foods. Mm-hmm. But that, that's basically all I have. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Boy, that was so thorough. We got a good team, don't we? God's Church of Love, I'm telling you. Andrea, you did a beautiful job. Very informative. And I hope you knuckleheads on YouTube are listening. We're trying to inform you the best we can. Don't wait till the last minute. Listen, do something now. Just about at the last minute as it is. Anyway, but thank you so much, Andrea. That was very thorough. Wow, between Lynn and, oh my goodness, this is great. And and we're going to keep trying to bring you guys information as we go. Let me add a few things. I think she already said batteries. Have batteries of different types. Uh, some of you, I, I want to show you an example of candles. Someone, I don't know if it was Andrea or my friend Roseanne, I'll be right back. But somebody shared that the little Catholic candles, they last forever. Look at how tall this thing is. It looks like it's about 10 inches tall. Okay? And here's the candle in here. Now, the candle is being contained in the glass. So it's not going to just drip off and be wasted. It's going to stay within the glass. So this will probably... Keep burning and burning and burning and burning. You can always get extra wick. If the wick burns down and, you, and it can't burn much, you can always add some wick after you heat up the top layer of the candle. Add some wick to it. Just buy some extra wick and keep it soaked in the wax and it'll burn for you. These are excellent to have. I bought a whole bunch of those. I think I bought about 10 or 15. So I'm good for the next 10 or 15 years. <laughs> So anyway, um, just to let you know, those are the kind of things that you have to think about. Another thing I didn't, I forgot to mention to you, and if I had planned ahead, I may try to find it so I could show it afterwards. But there's an, a, a kind of an aluminum or metallic uh, blanket, the blanket I got from a survival company. And the blanket is an insulator. So if it's cold or if it's extremely hot, whatever the case may be, the blanket will insulate and protect your body. It's almost like a sleeping bag. And the whole thing looks like metal, but it's like liquid metal because it's a blanket. So you wrap yourself up in it, not that thick. But you wrap yourself up in it, and maybe you have other things in between you and it, and it will help insulate you from freezing weather. Those are little tidbits. Another thing, in the wintertime, your heat goes out. Keep Vaseline in your house. We used to do this when we were in New York. In the wintertime, New Yorkers will tell you in a minute, oil yourself down from head to toe, even your face, to your toes. Yes, all the way to your toes, tippy toes, with Vaseline. And then cover all that up with socks and thermal underwear. And you put all that on with gloves and clothes and you will insulate your body so much more from the weather, from the blizzards, than you would if you didn't use any Vaseline at all. So those are little tips. I'm going to stop there. But... I hope all of this is helping you guys know what to do. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.